get in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Number seven, Vikings. Um, I don't think they upgraded their defense enough. I think the, the best move they made in the offseason was hiring Brian Flores as a defensive coordinator. I still think they have average personnel. They were 26 in defense last year. They made Daniel Jones look great twice. I do think they've got a smart offensive coach. They add Jordan Addison. The offense will be fine. But I don't doubt their offense much. I know what it is. It's top 10, top 12. I just don't think they did enough to the defense. I mean, it's a little negative for being the seventh best team in the NFL, according to the herd hierarchy. All right. Behind the Lions, too. Lions were six. Oh, the herd hierarchy is out of control now. I wonder, on this whole deep defensive thing, though, I wonder about, yeah, they haven't a- added a ton, and I don't expect it to, like, be top 10, okay? But are you telling me that with young talent potentially developing, you can't get this thing to 16th, 15th? Yeah, I, I think he's, well, I mean, like, national talking heads sure. aren't glued to the Vikings lately, so... Sure. You know, I'll forgive him for that, but I think there's I think there's a lot of people that are underestimating just getting rid of old people from the defense. <laughs> yeah, I agree. With that. And they might be getting it, but you can make the case. Well, what if they lose to Darius? Well, he's old. Maybe he doesn't. He's too old. He's you're, you're too old. Can't take you're, his house. <laughs> Look at him. He's too old. He's old. <laughs> they they had five guys over the age of thirty on that team last year. Just getting right. younger and getting Brian Flores. Now, if you get younger and all the young players can't play, okay. But just getting faster and younger and getting Brian Flores should help the defense not be thirty first in yards given up. Yeah, and don't forget too, Zadarius Smith was at the last. Nine games, ten games, had half a sack. Yeah. Well, so he's not just old, but his injury issues showed up. I just think that Zimmer showed this, too. I think if you can coach defense and, and you have athletes, you, you've got a chance. It doesn't need to be household names. Yeah. You know, I mean, at one time, Daniel Hunter was a nobody. He's a yeah. third-round pick. Defense is very reactive. So you, you need guys that can cover space. You need guys that can react quickly, that aren't stuck in the mud. So... That's kind of the hope here for the Vikings this season. But that's not why we're here today on this bonus episode of Purple Daily. We're going to give you this episode, and we're going to give you the Write That Down post-draft accountability session. Let's just say everything came off the board. So we're oh, going to yes. have like a two-hour like accountability that. session. Don't, don't want, no. We're here to talk about the future of the Vikings quarterback position, presented by our friends at TCL, one of the world's best-selling consumer electronics brands, They have a new lineup of award-winning TVs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution at an affordable cost. Enjoy more at TCL.com. Inspire greatness with TCL, an official partner of the National Football League. So Declan's going to play a clip here. This is Kwesi. Kwesi was asked about, this is is the post-draft press conference. So you drafted a quarterback. You elected to not extend Cousins beyond 2023. And this is Kwesi explaining all of this stuff when you go into a contract negotiation you're trying to come up with solutions together um, it's not just what Quasi wants or the vikings wants or it's even what kirk wants and what we can do together it ultimately puts together that lombardi and sometimes you come to a place where you decide hey let's talk later let's let this this is a solution for now that's all that's that's happened and then this year in this draft we found an opportunity to get a player that we frankly thought should have been picked long before then, and it was there, just like every other position. Um, but like you said, this is an important position, so obviously you, 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 know, you emphasize that when you can. But you know, we like where we are at the quarterback position, but every option is open to us um, going forward, and we're just really excited about Kirk this year, the weapons we've added in free agency, the weapons we've added in the draft, and we'll see what happens after that. A very diplomatic answer, mm-hmm. and, and I, I, I think I agree with him. I don't think they've made a decision – ironclad that he this is it he's gone I think they're setting it up so that if they would like to move on after 2023 they can but it's not like they traded up to number three to get his replacement they drafted a guy in the fifth round so just kind of soaking in how Kwesi painted the post-draft quarterback picture about Kirk about uh, Jaron Hall 
What do you think? What do you where do you think the Vikings are at with this this quarterback thing right now? I think options abound. I, I think that that's my slogan for the, the Vikings uh, quarterback conundrum situation. I think options abound. I think that um, they certainly had a goal. If they could have traded up and got a quarterback in the first round, that that was, was their goal. They clearly had a guy in mind. He went to the Colts, right? So he's gone now. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're shutting the door on Kirk. Now, I, but I do think what's going to, to play a role here, and it's smart. Part of the reason that they're going to be patient or have to be is because there's contracts to come up now, like Justin Jefferson's contract. Like there's guys that they're going to have to give and and want to give contracts to. And I do think that Kirk's going to, if he does stay, Phil, he's going to need to fit within the parameters of those contracts, right? So um, I think Kwesi is being as truthful as a football executive can possibly be. Yeah, I thought it was truthful, too. I thought it was, you know, I'll just reiterate the quote. He said, sometimes you come to a place in contract negotiations was the implication where you decide, hey, let's talk later. This is a solution for now. Now, I think if you were to ask Cousins Camp, what's the best solution for you guys? Well, it would be you know, about $40 million a year yep. on another multi-year guaranteed contract. But the Vikings kind of know. It, the Vikings are in the toughest spot you can be in with quarterbacks. It's a comfortable place. It's like having a, a really well-paying job that you're not in love with. It's maybe not what you dreamed of, but it pays the bills. You get to go to restaurants and eat nice meals once in a while and stuff. Like, you're not poor. So, like, life could be a lot worse than the... Like, I, I, I had a friend, and it was probably 10 or 12 years ago, who made like well into the six figures as kind of a financial advisor. And he was about, I don't know, like eight years older than I was. And I was always kind of like, man, it would be great to be great to be him. Right. You get to go and you put your suit and tie on and you go make a bunch of money. I asked him one time, man, yeah, you get, you must be loving life. He goes, dude, I hate my job. I, the only reason I'm still doing this is because it's hard to replace the income. Right. And if you're the Vikings, if you're being honest, the only reason why you keep doing the Kirk Cousins thing is because it's really hard to replace the 12th best quarterback in the NFL or the 10th best quarterback in the NFL. But the 10th or 12th best quarterback in the NFL very rarely is the guy that carries your franchise deep in the playoffs year after year. You need a, a ton of support even around the 10th best quarterback. It's hard to find the 10th best quarterback, but even if you get it, unlike Patrick Mahomes where you can trade away Tyreek Hill and then win the Super Bowl the next year because he's Patrick Mahomes, right? Mm-hmm. It's just a, they're just in a really comfortable spot. They are the guy that doesn't love their job but makes a lot of money. And, you know, I got a family and kids, and I can't just bail on the job without knowing what my plan B is. But I don't know that the Vikings found their ironclad plan B in Jaron Hall. So the options oh, no. remain open. I agree completely. And I think what they're doing, and it's smart, is they are – they don't love their job to to use what you're saying necessarily, but they know that what they've got is is solid and stable. And to go back to what you also said too, one, they're smart enough to know that finding your Mahomes is very difficult. Like that's not just uh, snap your fingers and now we've replaced Kirk with this great, um, you know, top five QB. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, and the, it's a cliche word, but I think Quazy has used this word since he walked in the door is they're going to be intentional about things, which means patient, which means not reactionary. So so that's why I, I said, and I got some pushback, but I said, you know, if they financially feel that they have to move off Kirk and they literally are not at a place yet where they have found the guy that they feel can be their, their Mahomes or their potential top five quarterback, there's a chance they go bridge. And I got a lot of pushback on that. They can't do that, but they can. They can, because what's the worst thing that they could do? Commit to something in a panic. That's the worst possible thing. We've seen that before. When you're panicked and you commit to something, um, it never really works out well. There's always something around the corner that's a problem. And so I don't really have a criticism here. And if Kirk comes back for a year or two again, you know what? 
it's not going to end the entire world, but I do think that Kevin O'Connell, when this is all said and done, and rightfully so, is a guy who develops and prides himself on working with quarterbacks, and I do think that he wants to find his guy. But the very important thing that I just said is he wants to find his guy. You can't legislate that I am going to go get my guy now. It sort of has to come together. So I don't think that, unless things change greatly, I don't think that this team is going to operate when it comes to Kirk's replacement by panicking. Might be wrong, but I don't Mm -hmm. think they're going to. Yeah. Dex, where are you at with uh, soaking all this in? What they did in the draft, what Kwesi said after the draft. It helps I turn my mic on. So when Phil said when Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi got hired that I don't think, I think I'm paraphrasing here, Phil, but you said that it wouldn't be a wise idea or probably isn't their best interest to commit to a guy that isn't theirs and that guy that's over 34 years old at the time. And they want to probably draft their own dude, right? They want to develop their own guy. They don't want to just inherit, hey, this older car that runs and is pretty solid and you can get a lot more mileage out of the car. They're going to want to eventually buy their own car. They're going to want to eventually grow Mm -hmm. their own quarterback, essentially. And they have the luxury here of having a very reliable car in Kirk Cousins, but they know that car is not brand new anymore, okay? It doesn't have the nav system in it, doesn't have all the fancy bells and whistles that everyone else in the AFC seems to have, and you're watching everyone buy that car, and you're like, I want one of those cars. Yeah, my car turns on every day, and it gets me where I need to go, but I can't take it on a long road trip. I know its limitations. It burns oil faster than these other cars. You need a new one, but you're waiting for interest rates to drop. You're waiting for the right one to fall in your lap, right? So I think they're kind of doing a lot of situations like that where they're waiting to figure out the best plan of attack to get their next franchise guy. They may, they thought about doing it in this year's draft, and they realized, oh, we don't want to sacrifice significant assets to go up to number four if it was Anthony Richardson or whoever it was. But we can still take flyers on Jaron Halls, et cetera, on day two, three of the draft. But I think there is going to come a point where the Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi Adolfa Mensa era is not just tied to Kirk Cousins. It's going to be tied to the next quarterback they find. That's, that's your defining moment. That's your defining moment as any coach, general manager tandem is finding that quarterback, developing it, and then obviously, hopefully, winning a Super Bowl with them. But they also found out this year, because I, I, I genuinely believe a lot of the buzz and steam that we saw reported and that we kind of heard just behind the scenes as well, that they I think they did really like Anthony Richardson. They liked the gamble that was, man, if we could turn this dude into the, the top version of Anthony Richardson, we could be sitting on a really special quarterback. Mm-hmm. But they found out if you want a guy like that or next year, if you want a Caleb Williams or a Drake May, you're going to have to move up into the top three. Or in in this case, well, I guess you would have had to move up into the top three because Indianapolis was going to sit there at four or maybe outbid you to move up a spot, right? So you, you had to get to three to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Next year, same thing. If you want one of the top dudes, if you want to, if you want to just like, Eliminate the luck factor in terms of hoping that a guy falls to 20 or 21. You got to move up into the top three to get one of those guys. And that's the hardest part. You're drafting 20th. You're drafting 23rd. You know, are, do you think they're going to be just organically drafting sixth next year with Kirk Cousins as the starting quarterback and Jefferson and Addison? Like this, it's going to be a good team. Right. This is good. I mean, we haven't done our official, maybe we should do our, our next picking of the schedule. The actual schedule comes out a week from tomorrow, but. I don't think any of us are going to make uh, make the Vikings record four and thirteen when we pick the schedule. So they were they were staring at all the options. I'm sure they had conversations with the Cardinals and other teams. Like what would what would it cost? Would two first round picks, three first round picks, and they decided, ooh, we like Anthony Richardson, but not enough to give up three first round picks and a couple seconds or whatever it would have taken to move up twenty spots, right? But that same thing is going to happen next year if you haven't. Fi- if, if you don't love Jaron Hall behind the scenes, if you decide not to extend Kirk Cousins, at some point, you either have to be bad and draft high, lucky and have a Lamar Jackson fall to your lap in the 32nd pick, or yeah. aggressive and trade multiple first-round picks to go up from 20th or 23rd into the top five. And that's why I, I said that if they can't come to an agreement with Kirk, you know, if, if they basically say, okay, we're going to have to buy time here. And we'll bring Kirk back after 2023. And they can't come to an agreement at that point in time. They might go bridge because think about this. Anthony Richardson showed you clearly now a skill set that they like, that they want. And his skill set, if maximized, 
ain't Kirk Cousins. <laughs> like he's a mobile kid. He's got different things. Like you, you can see O'Connell's mind, right? His brain working with like, I could do this. I could do that. Which, you know what? Kirk defenders, Cousins Crusaders, I'm not ripping him, but he doesn't have the skill set, okay? So having seen that, and and also importantly, having seen them pass on a few quarterbacks that fell to, to them, I mean, Will Levis, projected as a top five, fell out of the first round, went right by them, and they're like, nope, thank you very much. So again, we're not talking panic, we're talking calculated here you might find yourself in a situation where you're going to have to go or where you would be willing to go plug and play. Because if you're going to find that top five guy, if you're going to get that guy, if you're going to get your Mahomes, if you're going to get your guy who is who is um, tied to your coach for basically his entire career, two young guys, the coach and quarterback, you know, it's very hard to say, well, I mean, just suck next year. Like, just be bad. That's not how this works. That's not how they work. No, they, this organization, much like don't. the Steelers, does yep. not, they they want to be the Steelers, right? We're going to yes. readjust on the fly. And even when we're, re, the Steelers were rebuilding a little bit last year and still found a way to win nine games, right? And until that time comes, though, that you are in a position to either trade for or draft or somehow get that guy, you're going to you're gonna have to sort of make it up as you go along. But here's the good thing. Kevin O'Connell proved this with Kirk Cousins. He maximized them pretty damn well. Now, is that a Super Bowl guy? I don't think so, no. But, you know, for all we talked about Kirk's stats being down, you got 13 wins, and Kirk played a huge role there. So I think the hope ha has to be that Kevin O'Connell, with his quarterback, can tread water at least and, you know, have respectable results until the time that you can get that franchise guy, but forcing the franchise guy does not work. So I think, uh, and, and I do have a, a Jaron Hall question for you off our conversation with Thor yesterday, but I'm going to give you guys what I think are the four main bins of options for the Vikings at quarterback beyond 2023, based on what happened this last weekend. And I want to, I want, I want you guys to kind of rank. Well, some of these are like contingent, but I'm going to give you these four bins in just a second, but let's shout out, a new partner of ours here on Purple Daily and at Score North, our friends at Power Lodge and Miller Marine, a marriage of throttle therapy. So we provide purple therapy. Mm -hmm. They provide throttle therapy, pontoon therapy. We got to get Judd out, sports dad, sports therapist, out on a pontoon for max relaxation and bring a bunch of Vikings fans out. Afternoon That's what Jed? I think needs to happen. That's what I was going to say. I love that. I love that thought of, of just like like a July day, right? Pontoon on the, the lake, gorgeous day, a few beers, and we can just all relax. And pontoon therapy. That's a great one. Think about that. Think about the relaxation as you reset. As you don't concern yourself with the Bears, the Lions, the Packers, wide left kickers for one day. For one day, you can exhale, breathe in the gorgeous air on a pontoon, which, by the way, moves at Judd speed. Love the pontoon because it moves at my speed. And I can help provide th therapy thanks to our friends. Now through Saturday, the Saturday, May 6th, is your last chance to cruise on the lake in style and save cash. It's the Power Lodge and Miller Marine Power Sale. And during the Power Sale, you can find the boat or pontoon that's just right for you and create that next Remember When family moment head to powerlodge.com or millermarine.com and get used to saving big also a shout out to our friends over at aquaside speaking of lake season and summer on the horizon declan yeah really important to make sure uh, when you get that lake you get the dock in right we're getting closer memorial weekend you know coming up we're now in the month of may so let's make sure when you're looking in that water and you put those uh put those toes in the sand if you will you're not stepping on that nasty lake weed and algae you can remove that stuff with our Aquaside pellets from our friends at Aquaside. This is a do-it-yourself product. It's a safe product. They're located here in the Twin Cities in White Bear Lake. But you can order these products online to anywhere you want, basically, in the U.S. Go to Aquaside.com to take care of that nasty lake weed and algae. So here's four options for the Vikings. We're just looking ahead here. We're just bypassing the 2023 season for a moment, all right? Option number one at quarterback is, hey, Kirk Cousins, Played pretty well again, right? So he had some more fourth quarter comebacks. 
maybe they didn't stall out offensively in the second and third quarter as often, and the offense made a jump into the top five or six. They, you know, they were among the the handful of best scoring offenses in the NFL. He'll be 35 years old heading into the 2024 season, but you could extend him. He's in great shape. He didn't get hurt again. He had a big season. Okay, maybe this is a guy that's gonna, you know, maybe he's getting better like a like a fine wine as he gets closer to 40, and you could extend him, right? Okay. Option number two. Jaron Hall, the fifth-round draft pick out of BYU, who shows a lot of maturity, leadership skills. There's a reason why they loved him. Quasey even said we were kind of surprised he fell to the fifth round just because of all the intangibles and the moldable skill sets. Uh, others like Thor, and there are some other draft experts who are like, oh, that's kind of a reach in the fifth round. Not sure about that. So it's funny. The Vikings had him maybe as like a third-round, fourth-round grade. Yeah. But Jaron Hall, over the next... 12 months or so, blows you away behind the scenes, irons out some of the mechanical issues, and you're sitting on a mid-round quarterback like Kirk Cousins 12 years ago or a Russell Wilson that can just step in and take over for peanuts in terms of salary. That would be a gift from the heavens. That would be the best option, right? That you just This dude oh fell to God. your lap in the fifth round, and, he's good, and he makes yes. like a million dollars a year for the next four years. Yeah, Long shot, but yes. Option number three. You could buy low on a current young quarterback, Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. Those conversations have happened. And I bet you there's a lot of Vikings fans, me included for a second, when the trade flashed on the screen or on Twitter for us at the, at the I think we were watching, it was the second night. Oh, my God, the Vikings have traded with the 49ers. Oh, my God, here it is. It's oh, it's Trey Lance. Oh, God. <laughs> and it wasn't. It was just moving back for uh, 15 spots for an extra pick. But. You could trade for Trey Lance. I know people kind of laugh at this because he's a bust, right? Malik Malik Willis is on the outs. You could you could probably float a mid round pick for him and get him in the system. So you could buy low on a current young quarterback whose stock was much higher a year or two ago. Mac Jones, we've seen that name floated out there. And then I'll give you option four, which is what we just talked about. You could make a big aggressive move in the 2024 draft. You could hope that. The teams drafting at the top aren't quarterback needy because that's the problem. If you want Caleb Williams or Drake May, it's kind of checkmate if the first two teams need a quarterback. Right. They're not trading. Right. But if the first two teams already have a quarterback and maybe there's some trading to be done. So those are kind of the four. You don't know which option it's going to be until we get closer to the next year's draft. But the, that that's kind of the blank canvas that they have, I guess, in about eight months from now. So if, if you were to um, – if the Vikings at TCO had those four options on a board, okay, and they were to rank them. I think the Cousins one is certainly viable. I do. Mm-hmm. Now, now, if he comes in and he wants a ton of money and I just pay JJ, that might be a problem there. But, I mean, I don't I, – I certainly would not dismiss that one. Um, do, do I think that the Vikings – would like to move on at some point soon? Yes. Do I think that it needs to be immediately after 23 in their minds? Probably no. The development one is ideal, um, but Jaron Hall's probably like the the odds of that the odds of that going as perfect as it could are probably what five percent. Like just absolutely, he's like yeah, he can start. Historically, it's probably yeah five five three to five percent. It's five. very very low. It's mm-hmm. very low. Um, I feel like the t- taking a shot on a quarterback one probably ranks in the middle, but the problem, or it's not a problem. The issue there is, who are we talking about? If it's Trey Lance, okay, let's play ball there. If it's Malik Willis, you probably have to get him into the system and see, and, mm-hmm. and there's questions. There's probably, there's questions with Trey Lance. There's probably more questions if you go down to a, a guy like that. Um. Now, let's talk about the draft one, though, okay? So do you guys think, and I can't tell yet, do you guys think the reluctancy to make what, if they could have, what would have been an enormous trade-up and and you would have had to give up a ton, do you think that sets a tone for how Quazy and the franchise think, or do you think that that's going to be potentially a year-by-year thing where, to your point, Phil, next year they could say, no, no, we're going to make that type of trade and mortgage a lot of draft assets for the future. I will say, I think if you ranked, if you if if you took all 32 teams and had their front offices and then took all of the prominent mockers and said, hey, everyone who knows something about football scouting, 
rank all of the quarterbacks in this year's draft and next year's draft. I think Caleb Williams would be number one. I think there's a chance Drake May would be number two and then Bryce Young. You could Caleb Williams would be number one. And then it might be it might be a battle between, but Drake May is like, you know, there's questions about Bryce Young's size. So from that perspective, if you're Quasi or anyone looking to trade up, it's a it's never a sure bet. Right. But it's a it's a more sure bet if you were to move up for Caleb Williams than if you're moving up for Anthony Richardson, who you're gonna have to mold for just like the accuracy problems and some of that stuff. So but there there's never a sure bet. But it, obviously this year Quasi said Okay, and I'm making these percentages up. We think there's a 50 to 60% chance Anthony Richardson can be a guy. Like there's a big bu- there's a big bust percentage, but we think that if there's like a better than coin flip chance and we're willing to maybe trade up to make that happen. But we like Jaron Hall and name two or three other quarterbacks, Hendon Hooker later in the draft too. Those guys are like a 25 to 30% chance maybe is that difference. Let's say you had Jaron Hall as like a he's like a 25% of the time we think he pans out. Mm-hmm. And Anthony Richardson's like 55% of the time. Is that worth giving up three first round picks for that gap with the remaining uncertainty? Now if you get to a Caleb Williams it's more like it's like 80%. This he's going to be a dude. Okay, now I'm more willing to trade two or three future first round picks, right? That's how I think he views you know, just like stock and player equity. Yeah. And I I think if they love Caleb Williams and there's a chance to get him, or if it's Drake may even, cause I obviously Caleb Williams is going one overall. So very likely you'd have to be just horrendously bad, or you're not going to be classic Vikings at 17 and having to go all the way up to get him. Um, So if, if they feel that Drake may is maybe that guy and Drake may is the second QB off the board and they want to potentially move up the 10, 12, whatever spots it is. I think they're probably more likely to do it that way because they just can't keep kicking the, oh, well, we don't want to give up. You can't just keep having the same conversation which, which you had this year in the draft of, well, we don't want to give up future first-round picks. Well, then what are you going to do at quarterback? My fear is this. Um, I, I think unlike 2022 where the Bears were just awful but actually had a guy, uh, a young QB that they like, I don't think that's going to repeat itself. Like, I... I I think Tampa Bay is going to be purposely awful. Like I think they're going to be I think they're going to win about two or three games and they're going to do it with an intention to get a quarterback. So that circles back to Phil your point which is I wouldn't be very surprised if the two worst teams make sure that they're terrible because they want those two QBs. Mm-hmm. And then you're right. Then then it becomes impossible. In Arizona when you the PFF way too early 2024 mock we went over yesterday. You know, they had Arizona picking number one because Kyler Murray is injured. The franchise is in chaos. It it just seems like weird vibes there. And even though they have a quarterback, if they're sitting number one, they might draft a quarterback and then yeah. figure out what to do with Kyler Murray. Maybe they just trade Kyler Murray. Yeah. So right. I, real quick question here for you on Jaron Hall, because Thor obviously is not in love with Jaron Hall. Tyler Fornis is very much in love with with Jaron Hall. But when Thor started to bring up some of the things he doesn't love about Jaron Hall and why he would have just gone in a different direction with that draft pick, Judd was the one that played the role of, wait a second, I'm going to push back here on behalf of fans. And it kind of felt like you had some legitimate pushback just with your own thoughts too. What, uh, What inspired you? Are you a fan of the Jaron Hall pick? What inspired you to push back against Thor so much yesterday? I'm not a fan because I have no clue. Like, I don't know. But I just think that until I'm proven completely wrong, I think that Kevin O'Connell needs to be given the benefit of the doubt because, you know, when it was Rick and Mike, QB-wise, often a train wreck. I mean, Mike didn't care, and I think Rick struggled. Um, But I push back because... Until you proved to me that Kevin O'Connell is a it has no idea what he's watching at that position, which by the way, I don't believe. I think he does. I push back because I think the Vikings are being influenced finally by a guy who knows what he's watching. And and so I don't think it's fair. Look, O'Connell in a moment of truth would probably tell you the odds here aren't great. Like I think I can do good good work here, and I think that I can develop this kid but the odds of him like becoming our guy probably aren't great but i feel a lot better about quasi and koc drafting jaron hall than i did for instance about 
Rick Spielman drafting Kellen Mond. Yeah. That's why I push back. Well, and I think another reason too, because we're thinking in terms of, you know, can he, can he, can they hit the jackpot? Can he be the successor to Kirk Cousins? There's also value in Jaron Hall just being a really good backup that shows out in preseason. Because guess what? In two years, some other desperate team might give you a second or a third round pick for him. We see that all the time in the NFL. The Patriots drafted Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett, right? And then those guys, of course, those guys are playing behind Tom Brady. Yep. But then those guys just don't have a, a, a spot to start. And you wind up getting some draft value for them. You're not going to get like a second round pick for Nick Mullins. You need someone who's young and has upside and, you know, maybe someone who hasn't put a bunch of bad film in the regular season out, right? Your guys like this are almost more valuable if they show out in the preseason and then have one great game and all of a sudden people are like, oh my God. Correct. It's crazy. And, and if Kevin is developing these guys as well and he becomes known as, hey, he does a, a good job, teams are going to trust that w uh, more, right? I, I mean, there's going to be more of a trust. And Kevin O'Connell also for as, as tough as the loss to the Giants was at the end of the day in the playoffs, Kevin O'Connell also, I think, gets a lot of credit for what Kirk did. Because, I mean, Kirk Cousins became somebody that I think we can safely say he had never really been before. Like, those comebacks were damn impressive. And and for, I, I think O'Connell, for, for his first year, really showed us, and if you're a Vikings fan, this is exciting, quarterback competence from a coaching standpoint which i don't think they have probably gotten re on a regular basis here since what Shermer, like kubiak G gary was fine but he certainly didn't take kirk up a notch de filippo had good ideas and kirk was a mess um so like we're, we're talking like 2017 mm -hmm. and for kevin o'connell to take kirk at this point in kirk's life and career and to turn him into something that he wasn't that's pretty damn good. Yeah, I agree. Have some faith. Have some mm -hmm. faith. So options are open. Some interesting paths forward after 2023, unless something crazy happens still this summer with like the desperate 49ers. And they are still desperate. But it just, it, it looks like Kirk's going to be the starter. What are they going to do? That's such a good point. I mean, is Sam Darnold really going to be under center on <laughs> Wouldn't they day? call the Vikings? Like, isn't, am I... But then, but then if you're the Vikings, the Vikings are, I think if you're the Vikings right now, you've got your number two wide receiver, you've got your tackles, you've got Brian Flores, yeah, your defense is younger. I mean, yeah. the Vikings are now probably in the mindset of, let's go, baby. We just won 13 games. Agreed. We had some flirtations about, you know, changing up the quarterback situation. But now that everything is set, I think the Vikings are locked in on trying to win the division again, an Aaron Rodgers list division, try to go as far as they can and figure it out later, right? So, yeah, just weird. Uh, a shout out as well to our friends at Dennis Kirk. Dennis Kirk for you, Victors and Ragnars. Okay, it's dude. It's sixty-seven degrees today, sunny, oh, riding time. Take the cover off the bike. You'll find what you need at DennisKirk.com, so you can ride more and wait less. Over a hundred eighty thousand parts and accessories in stock, clothing and helmets as well. Shipping is free for orders over eighty-nine dollars. If you order by eight p.m., they ship the same day. Everything you need for your ride at DennisKirk.com. We'll hit you with a huge accountability session and a write that down session oh. as well today on Purple Daily. Daily Vikings Entertainment, where we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.